Hi guys, it is Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and I'm here with another weekly wrap up. So I got four books uh, finished this week and I'm currently halfway through a fifth, but I don't think I'll get that finished um, until very late tonight, um, if not Monday morning. So I'm going to go ahead and tell you the four books that I read this week. So the first book I finished was Kicking the Bucket List by Kathy Hopkins. This is a book I received from NetGalley um, and it just came out recently this month. And it is kind of a adult contemporary story about three sisters whose mother has passed away and the three sisters haven't talked in two or three years and um, because they all had a massive argument when their mom was getting sick. Um, and they're just really really different people as well and they kind of were always kind of at each other growing up and eventually they just all stopped talking to each other but to get their inheritance from their mother um, she has set this kind of the kicking the bucket list for them and she basically has told them within a year they have to do uh, six weekend trips together and kind of do these different things that she has set out for them to do and um, to try and kind of get closer to each other and also do different things to reconcile some differences and like troubles in their own life as well. So the story is narrated by one of the sisters called Daisy and the other sisters are Floor and Rose and they're all just so completely different and I did really really enjoy this book for the most part. I read a book last year called The Alphabet Sisters by Monica McInerney um, and it's very very similar to this book um, in a way because it's about three sisters who also haven't talked for years um, and then they are brought together by their granny organising a party for herself where in this they're obviously or been brought together by their late mother who has organised this bucket list for them. Um, but there's just some things that happen in both books that are very very similar. One thing that happens to characters in both books um, are literally almost the exact same. Um, so it did remind me a lot of another book I read but there were obviously differences in the story so I was able to quite enjoy this one. It was quite predictable at times but I sometimes like that about these kind of books. I like kind of seeing where it's going to go and I enjoy kind of being right when it does go there. Um, and yeah it was just like a nice fun and it was quite emotional at times as well it was one that you know it didn't really hit me really really hard but there were just some times where like you know their grief for their mother came back because their mother has only been dead a few months at the start of the book and they're still dealing with all their grief and there's times where they all miss their mom at the same time like times they see her on the video cameras when she's telling them every every weekend trip of what she's planning for them to do and they see her on the video camera and there's a lot of descriptions about their feelings seeing their mom like that and um, looking very much alive when they know obviously that she is dead and she's not with them anymore and I really felt that like grief and the rawness of her not being around anymore when the characters were describing it um, and I did really enjoy that. There was one thing in this book that just did kind of irritate me um, and it was at one point one of the sisters um, the two of the other sisters were joking at the expense of another sister at the older sister and the older sister Rose described the two other sisters as retarded and that just annoyed me because I feel like you know it's 2017 and we don't need those kind of slurs in books anymore. Now in saying that what I was reading was obviously a um, an e-proof copy it wasn't the final copy so for all I know that's not in the finalized version of the book and um, so that could have been taken out I have no idea but that was one thing that did um, just stand out to me that I felt shouldn't be there um, and then there's another point where they're doing a Zumba class and the sister what uh, one of the sisters D she describes um like the three of them doing the Zumba class as a special needs outing and again there was just that kind of you know I don't really, I like I just I don't know I just it just rubbed me up the wrong way and I just feel like those kind of things don't need to be in books anymore because I do know that the word retard was used in paper towns I think um, and John Green did get um, slammed for it at one point a few years ago and he has come back and said if he was to write it again he would take that word out that he wouldn't use that word and he understands that it was wrong for him to put that word in there and I do feel the same here so but as I said for all I know that didn't end up in the final version um, of the book on the shelves so I gave this book a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book I read was Night's Shadow by Sebastian de Castell and this is the second book in the Great Goats trilogy which is kind of a fantastical three musketeers type story um, about this world where there was a king and he had these knights called the great coats and they were like fantastic fighters they were kind of they went around and told the laws they were able to settle disputes um, and they were kind of like judge and knight and 
jury all at the same time, I guess. The Dukes and the Duchesses overthrew the King and killed him and all the great coats were left without any kind of leader but before he died the king all gave them separate missions and um, but we don't know what each mission was it was just the only person that would know it was the king and the person he gave the mission to so they all have different missions and we are following three different great coats we are falcio de mond um, and his friends kest and brasti um, and this is the second book obviously so i can't say too much about it because i don't want to spoil the end of the first book but we were just following on with their adventures and um, as they try and kind of bring the country back to proper rule and try and stop kind of the the kind of dukes who are quite corrupt at times and the treachery and stuff like that so this was great I absolutely loved this one and um, it was like 600 pages but I flew through it really quickly and um, because I just could not put it down I just love Falco de Mond as a main character he is just so loyal and just and good and I just love him so much like there's just so much nobleness in him he just I just love him he's just so great to follow and he's so great just to see the way he thinks about things and how good he is but how strong he is at the same time and um yeah I just love him I can't even say anything I just I just love this book I love the fight scenes as I've said before are absolutely fantastic because um Sebastian de Castell was a fight choreographer um he was I don't know if he still is but I do know that he was um so everything is described so perfectly in the fight scenes like there's so much description but it's so real and you can just see it in your head and it's so great um but yeah I absolutely loved this one I love the series I can't wait to get the third one from the library very soon um, and yeah I just can't wait to continue on with this and see how it goes so I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars the next book I read was also a neck alley book and it was The River of Kings by Taylor Brown this is a kind of book that is set in a few different um, time eras we are having present day and we are following two brothers called Hunter and Lawton um, and their dad has died and they are basically spreading his ashes on the river the um Almahaha River in Georgia and um, which is where their father kind of he was like a fisherman and he basically spent his entire life on this river so they are going to spread his ashes but the older brother um, who is Lawton I think um, he feels like there's something more behind their father's death that he didn't die the way they think that everyone thinks he died because they all think that a sturgeon which is like a big fish slammed him in the chest which caused I think like his I don't know did something to his heart um, and it caused him to die um, and fall overboard um, but they think that there might be something else going on so they're going on this kind of journey um, to say goodbye to their father and also kind of dig out a few secrets um, and then we're also getting a look at it's 1564 I think and it's the French people um, I think at the when they started Fort Caroline um, and I think that's also on the Mal Almahaha River I'm not 100% sure um, but so we're following these like very very early French settlers in what would become the United States um, and just the troubles they had with starvation and you know befriending the natives and how they treated them and the skirmishes they had with the Spanish um, and just all the different troubles that they had there. Um, this was okay um, I like the writing in it was beautiful the writing was really really lovely the descriptions were lovely the descriptions of the river um, were gorgeous like you could really see what was being described and um, just the sounds and the smells and the sights and yeah it was just really really vivid and really lovely I did quite like the brothers I liked their camaraderie I liked their friendship um I liked how there was definitely this kind of trust and bond between them you could really see that in the writing there was one point because the one of the brothers the youngest brother is only in college so he he's quite young and the other the older brother is in his 20s um and they had a conversation at one point where the younger brother was asking the older brother if he thinks that he's gotten fat because he was saying there's some men in his college that are really really ripped and really muscly and have eight packs and all this kind of stuff and he was getting a bit concerned that like he might be fat and or he might be getting fat and it was a really really brief moment but I really enjoyed it because I just liked that that was put through these two very macho men who would have had grown up with a very macho man father and they had this very brief conversation about body image and um, just like how they perceive themselves and 
I just really liked that. I just thought it was really honest um, and it's nice to see men talk about those kind of things where women are so concerned about being skinny all the time. Men are also seen like other men, like celebrities and stuff being really ripped and really muscly. So obviously that would affect them as well and seeing other people obviously like in the gym or whatever being really musty. Like obviously that would affect men the same way seeing loads of skinny girls um, will affect women. Um, and I just, I just really liked that that was put in there even though it was so, so brief. There was a very brief moment in this that also didn't really work for me. Um, it was quite just crude and vulgar. I just, it's something that I didn't really like that was put in. But again, I can't say what it is because it would be a spoiler. Um, I do have it in my Goodreads review um, if people do want to know what happens. But um, I just thought it was a bit much really to put in because it was quite descriptive at some point uh, though it was a very brief moment in the book as well um, it didn't last very long it was only like a few paragraphs which was okay and I did enjoy the historical aspect of it there was a lot of things like I don't know much about the very early start in the United States I don't know much about American history like in general to be honest um, so I did enjoy seeing that because there was a lot of stuff I didn't know that I learned I feel um, and I also just was really I thought it was really interesting to see how the settlers um, really depended on the native people to help them survive. Like there was times where they had no food and were starving and they needed to beg to the natives to be able to give them grain and like game and stuff like that. Um, and I just really, really liked that. And I just found it interesting to see how they would repay them in turn, which was often not very nice. They often didn't treat them very well. Um, and yeah I just I just thought that was very interesting so I did like that but overall I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. And the last book I finished this week was Perfect by Cecilia Hearn and this is the second book in the flawed duology which for some reason I forgot that it was a du duology and I thought it was this uh, trilogy so when I was reading this and I was getting to the end of it I was like hmm this looks as like going to be wrapped up in the second book what's going to happen in the third book and then I realised by the end of it that you know there was it, it was completely wrapped up in a lovely little bow that there wasn't there wasn't going to be a third book. So this is basically following on with Celestine North who lives in a country which is ruled by something called the Guild which is basically where um, if you make immoral decisions or decisions that are considered wrong but can't give you jail time you are branded with a flawed symbol so an F um, somewhere on your body and you are treated as a second class citizen. And in the first book, Celestine North ends up getting branded in five different places, um, which is the most anyone has ever been branded, um, because she helped a flawed, um, an old flawed man um, who was sick on a bus. And you're not supposed to aid a flawed person, but Celestine did, and she got in a lot of trouble over this, and she kind of became the mocking Jay I guess for the flawed system and for the people who want to take the system down and um, she kind of becomes this face for that um so in the second book this I obviously I can't say too much of what she's doing in the second book because it will spoil the end of the, third, of the first book um but I did enjoy seeing how this went um I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as the first one and um, I was I'm a bit like I don't know I haven't quite made my mind up about how much I enjoyed it yet um I at the first book there was like she has a boyfriend in the first book and obviously that doesn't quite work out the way she would want it to after she was flawed um, and then there's this other boy that she meets and um, while she is being waiting for her verdict when she has been is is being tried as a possible flawed person um, and she obviously has a connection with him and a chemistry with them because they were going through the same thing and then she can't stop thinking about him then once she's out and the second book he's more like in it like as a free person obviously not in like a cell um, and I just there's just some things about like her budding romance with him that just annoyed me a little bit like I felt like she had she had bigged him up in her mind so much that by the time they were together I felt like they didn't actually have any real conversations together because it was like they'd been like dating each other in their minds for so long that like they didn't really need to I don't like I don't know it was just so strange I just didn't really like it and then she did have sex with him um like a few days after she get, she meets up with him again in the second book and obviously it was her first time she's a virgin she's never had sex before um if you've read the book you know Celestine is quite she's someone who wouldn't do that kind of thing very like randomly she's someone who would want to plan it out it happens very suddenly there's no mention about feelings or how people you know real real talk about um 
consent or protection and stuff like that I think that's needed I think you need to talk about consent you need to talk about condoms you need to put that moment in a book where a guy stops and puts on a condom or a girl says you know this that or the other like well you can't even say I'm on the pill because you need to be saying protecting against STIs as well and I just think it's important to put these things in YA books so younger readers will 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 see it and know that that's a normal thing to do and I just get annoyed when it doesn't happen because I feel like it should um, and there were just some things about her losing her virginity that didn't feel right to me because she had only known this guy a very short time she didn't seem to know the real him as I said she seemed to be dating him in her mind for a lot longer than she was actually with him in real life in the book um, so yeah so that just kind of irritated me but I did enjoy how this finished up and um, I just thought it was wrapped up in a really neat little bow by the end of it um, it wasn't you know there what there weren't very like the, nothing was left unanswered everything was answered that you wanted to be answered and um, the one thing I enjoy about this book is that the guild does is like this big ruling force but it is not um, the only power the guild does um, it does rely on the public support and it does rely on the support of the government so if that goes the guild can crumble and that's one of the reasons why Celestine is so dangerous to the judge uh, judge Crevin who kind of rules the guild and um, because she is the power to turn everyone's opinion against the guild um, and I just love that, that it's not some like overpowering like president, like President Snow in the Hunger Games where he could do whatever he wanted. That's not the case in this book. Um, it's a little bit more realistic in that sense, I guess. Um, and I do enjoy that. So yeah, but I gave this a 3, 3.5 out of 5 stars. Can't quite decide yet. I think 3, 3.5 maybe 3.25 to even it out um but yeah I did enjoy it I did enjoy the duology as a whole and um, I would recommend it for people if they want a YA duology if they're looking for something that might be fun and quick to read um so yeah so that is everything that I've read this week please let me know what you guys are reading at the moment what you guys think of the books that I have read um and I'll see you guys again next time